We have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. We have given them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey across East Africa and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shepap Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepap. Today we are revisiting some of the farms we had visited earlier. Remember Beatrice and Nicodemus? Meet Beatrice, Nicodemus and their two children. They all live here in Nyeri in their one acre shamba. So this is where you are growing your, yeah. My sweet your, your sweet potato, right? Mm. We had brought in Samia Gili, an expert on the orange fresh sweet potato, to educate the farmers. This is what he said. So Sami, you've had a look at uh, Beatrice's sweet potatoes patch. You have something to tell us about a different kind of potato. Sure, I have something to tell you. <laughs> yes. You can see from uh, my hands, we have uh, the local one, mm -hmm. which is cream, mm -hmm. and uh, the orange fleshed one, which is orange inside. Can you see the difference? Yes, mm -hmm. I'm seeing We are trying to promote this one because of the nutritional benefit. Mm -hmm. It is rich in vitamin A that is required by the body. So now she has her planting materials. So how does she prepare the land and what exactly does she do? The first thing before you even start preparing the land, mm -hmm. you make sure that that land, the previous crop was not sweet potato. Uh, because if you plant the same, then uh, there are chances of building up of diseases in that field. So you need a field that was not previously planted or sweet potato. Mm -hmm. So uh, you plow your land, your land you, you do the harrowing, mm -hmm. and then you make your ridges, mm -hmm. which should be one meter apart. And then uh, you choose your planting material now. Remember, the recommended length of your planting material mm -hmm. should be about 30 centimeters. Uh, this should have at least three nodes, uh, one, two, three, mm -hmm. where two nodes should go down mm -hmm. on the ridge when you are planting, mm -hmm. and one node should be out of the ridge. Mm -hmm. And the distance between one plant and the other should be 30 centimeters. So you've heard it, huh? Nicodemus yeah. and Beatrice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, you spread the good news, yes. right? Yes, yes. <laughs> we are going to spread it. <laughs> Let's go see what they have been up to. We found Beatrice and Nicodemus harvesting, a sign that things had gone well with their orange flesh sweet potatoes. Oh, Beatrice and Nicodemus, I can see you in the middle of harvesting. How has it been? It has been very good. Mm -hmm. We have harvested a lot of them. Really? We started there, then mm -hmm. we are at the middle of it. Aha! Uh -huh. So it's, it's good? It's, it's very good. good. So you've been selling the vines as well as the potatoes? The root and the vine. So they want the vine to plant? Yeah, the, the vine, vine to plant, plant. And, uh -huh. the root to, and the root to eat. That's very nice. So what's your plan? We have just taken the vines and we have planted another part of it. And because we have seen that they are, they are very nice and people mm -hmm. need them so much. Ah, so there's huge demand. Uh, yeah. Ah, that's very nice. And are they tasty? They're yeah. very sweet. Oh, and how big are they? Can you see? Mm -hmm. Wow, they're, they're, they're big. This is the right yeah, size, like we said yeah. last time. Remember the size we said? Yeah. Yeah? So how much are you selling, the three of them? This is 50 bob now. 350 bob? Yes. Yes, yeah, so you must have a lot of money right now. <laughs> That's really good. Really good. Congratulations. You're doing very well and keep up. Last time, Beatrice had a very bad patch of Skumawiki. So we brought in an expert to help her improve. Paul, even before you say anything concerning Beatrice's vegetables, let me just say they don't look good. But what do you think? Actually, that's very true. They don't look good. There is no good organization in the field. There is no proper spacing maintained. Basically, we can say she has been doing poor. So, Beatrice, you agree? Yes. If you happen to look at the Beatrice Kuma, mm -hmm. uh, you find that uh, some are not even green. Right, and that, what is the problem? The, the yellow coloration you'll see in some of these leaves is lack of nitrogen. Mm. And actually that is not what we eat. We mm -hmm. need to eat a, a sukuma which has a good green color, mm. right. a tender one, 
and the trees are big, a big one which has a good shape. So with the beetroot, the crop that you'll be planting, mm. we want you to be top dressing them with CAN, mm. so that you can avoid this year of coloration on your leaves. Paul showed beetroot how to plant a new crop of sukuma wiki. Uh, what we have here is a planting fertilizer, mm -hmm. what we call Mea Mazao 23. And we are using Mea Mazao 23 because it does not acidify the beetroot's land. When planting sukuma wiki or spinach, make rows 30 centimeters apart and holes 30 centimeters apart on each row. Put 10 grams or one bottle cup of Mea Mazao 23 fertilizer in each hole. Mix the soil and fertilizer. Water the holes. Then plant the seedlings, making sure that the roots go into the soil straight. Uh, so Beatrice, last time we were here, we came with the experts. Yes. We showed you how to make a nursery yes. and how to use fertilizer. So how has it been since? The vegetables were very good. I was selling one sp three spinach at 10 shillings. Really? Yes. You sold a lot? Yes, I sold a lot. Uh -huh. The whole December, I sell it for the whole December. Oh, that's very nice. They were very big, green, even I can show you I have saved them. You my... have saved? Yes, at my screen saver. Oh, that's clever. Let's yes. see. Yes. This is for two weeks, uh -huh. and this is when we were selling it. Also, it is this very is only big. one. This is only one. Yes. So I was removing these three. I sell them. Then I go to the other one. I was removing three. I, I made five thousand shillings profit. Great. Mm -hmm. so this is kumawiki. So mm -hmm. the spinach are on the other side and the cabbages mm -hmm. because we have to to shade the garden. Ah, you have to rotate. Yes, to rotate. Oh, that's good. Yes. You learned. Yes. So I see you have you have a new crop. Now, do you want to keep on using the same uh, method, using this mare, the fertilizer? Yes, I'll continue using the mare fertilizer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good. It's very good to me. Thank you. Thank you for You've much. done very well. Mm -hmm. And congratulations. Thank you. During our shape up of the Shamba last time, this is what happened. The house has several limitations. Yes. The first piece is not adequate. <laughs> Since an improved like a portal requires one feet squared, you can see they're already squeezed. The house has no good uh, roofing. When it rains, water gets inside the, the house. The floor is very dirty. You can see the height of the, of, of the house, which is allowed the three feet. An improved house should, have, should be allowed 2.5 meter, where a farmer can be able to work comfortably. There, there is no door, so those are major limitations that need to be improved. Ah, good. Each chicken needs one square foot of space. So, 30 chickens need 30 square feet of space, which means about 4 feet by 8 feet. And the shed should be 7 feet high, so that the farmer can get in easily. Chickens can share laying nests. Five birds can use one nest. So, 30 birds need six nests. Each nest should be one foot cubed. That is, one foot wide by one foot long by one foot high. Mm -hmm. And so, under Mr. Kiyama's instructions, we begin construction of the improved chicken shed. It's time to find out about a new breed of chicken. This is a chicken from Karin Naivasha, which has been developed for local condition within our country. Mm. And I think it would be easier for Beatrice to take care of it. It's a good breed. It's a good breed. Nice. Yeah. Mm. Good, good. Mm -hmm. So, Doc, what is the production of these curry chicken? You find the local chicken can give you up to 60 eggs in a year. I was opposed to curry because of genetic development and all that. They can give you up to 200 eggs in a year. From the look of things, the shed is still in good condition. And so are the chickens. There are even eggs in the boxes. Let's hear from the farmers how things have been. Very nice to see you, Nicodemus, and very glad to be here again. Thank you. Last time we were here, we introduced to you 
a breed of uh, an improved breed of chickens. Yeah. And I can see the chicken house is still standing, very firm and very beautiful, and a padlock on the door. Mm -hmm. Very strong padlock. You tell me something about that later, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so now, how has it been, Nicodemus? How is the progress so far? We have done a lot of improvement because we have uh, our chickens are layering so well. Mm -hmm. We have 15 chickens, yes. and uh, we are getting at least 10 to 12 eggs per day. So how many eggs? were you getting before? Sometimes you get two, two, three. That's big, that's big improvement. Now we are selling. So now mm. you're selling. Mm. I'm and selling now. Is there a good market? There is a good market because the, 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 the type of uh, chickens we have, mm -hmm. they are not the same with the, the other local people mm -hmm. they have. Because of the improved breed? It yeah. Is good. One egg we are selling at 20 shillings. One because, egg? Yeah. That's awesome. What about the padlock? This project is for the security. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of problems here, but I have decided to put a very big padlock for, mm -hmm. for the security. Have you ever had a problem with security yourself? Yeah, I have. What happened? Um, we have some thieves and they, they, they took my chickens. How many do they take? 16 chickens. Mm -hmm. um, but we managed to save at least 15. But despite all that, despite that setback, you managed to rise again on your feet and you're back again. I'm back again now. That's very impressive, yeah. Nicodemus. Yeah. Keep it up. Now, me, it's very encouraging and very nice to see farmers adapting to new farming methods. Yes, and increasing their income. Mm -hmm. And mm. there's still more good news to come. Right after the break. Welcome back. Tony, it's very interesting to see farmers following experts' advice. And it's also very nice to see their lives changing. Mm -hmm. Now, here are some more positive stories. Remember Jackson and Zipporah? Let's have a recap. Jackson showed us around his shamba. He has worked really hard and used all the space of his land to grow as many things as possible. We were very impressed until we saw the entrance to the chicken house. What's that hole? The hole is for entrance of chicken. Dr. Lawrence from Technosav has come to give us some ideas for Jackson's chicken house. The only thing we'll do is just ventilation. The height looks okay. We'll block off completely the east and the west side and then we'll put ventilation on the south and the north side. We'll cover it about three feet and then the upper part, which is about four feet, you will put a wire mesh across there. Yeah, you can make another better, better one. What? Why are you behaving a like better a better house? Why are you behaving like a weaver bird? Jackson, did you know that weaver birds they weave the nest, then the female comes to inspect. If she likes the nest, I didn't she know stays that. there. Yeah. I didn't she know that. Like it. Yeah. She, she throws it down. Speaking of birds, how are your chickens? My chicken are 27. When you left, I bought the, the first lot, 21 of them. They were five, five days old. I read them until they have now grown. I've sold eight of them. Ah, and the market is good? The market was, was good. Mm -hmm. I normally kill the required food mm -hmm. and the water is available. Uh -huh. The chamber shape up helped you? It, it has helped me a great deal. So now Jackson, how do you see yourself? going from here with your chickens. It seems you came. Mm. I've now caught up. Mm -hmm. mm. The future is bright. The future looks bright. So yeah. well, we'll get in there and have a look, shall we? Yes. Okay. I brought you something here. Uh, it's uh, called delight. Yeah. It's a light that you just need the sun. So this is the lamp, this is the, the panel you put on the roof and you connect it here and then you can put uh, the light inside the house. It can go up to 100 hours if it's not very, very bright. You can use it as a torch, you can charge your phone. I see the daylight is still with you. Oh, Tell me about the daylight. Is, yes. How has it been the experience with the light? It has reduced me the cost of fuel. Uh. I don't buy any kerosene this day. Yes. Uh, also, I, I don't spend money on, on charging 
my, my, my phone. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the light at night? Blend of light. What do you do with the money you save? Uh, it is now you've used on other items. In the farm? In the farm. Ah. Yeah. Where is the other lamp? Uh, I'm just seeing the, I'm just seeing the panel. Yeah. Wow, you it keep it here? Yeah. <laughs> this is nice, this is yeah. nice. This is keeping it safe. Yeah. It looks still new. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, well done, well done Jackson. Moses from Kari Kakamega is here and doesn't think Jackson's climbing beans are real climbing beans. Jackson here believes this is a climbing bean, is it? No, these are not climbing beans. They are what we call runners. They are mainly for soil conservation, soil improvement and livestock feed. So now tell us about the real, the real climbing beans. Yeah, the climbing beans are just normal beans. They only differ maybe in the size. We have two types. This is called Mark 49 and this is Omobano. If you boil them, you eat, they are just normal beans. So what are the advantages of uh, the climbing beans vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the bushy beans? The area you can grow. You only require a small area. The second one is that the climbing beans can be harvested for a long time, for over three months. The third one is that the climbing beans, the yield by unit area is higher than the bushy beans. Wow. To plant climbing beans, first make furrows 50 centimeters apart. Oh. So. Mm. Then plant seeds 15 centimeters apart along the furrows. Up. 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 Cover each seed with soil and some water. The plants should germinate in seven days. Jackson, this is a beautiful green forest of beans. You have done well. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So after we left, what have you been doing since? Uh, since you left, I prepared the shamba uh -huh. and then uh, planted these beans. Right. Yeah. So and now, because they have started climbing, yes. I'm now putting in some pods uh -huh. for them to climb. Yeah, so this is your first planting? Yeah, this is my first planting. Yes. Yeah, of climbing beans. What type is it? Oh, they are of two types. Mm -hmm. That one is called Mark 49. Uh -huh. And this one is called Omovano. So do you have the bush the, the bush uh, beans? Yeah, I have them. Where are they? You planted them? Uh, planted them more up. Oh, there. the ones inside the, the maize. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So why? I wanted to notice the difference uh -huh. between the three species. Right. The one which gives high yields, yes. I shall embark on that. Uh, so it's like you have an experiment right now yeah, yeah. to see which one is going to yield better. Yeah. My expectation is that after harvesting, I will know we, we, the, the variety which is suitable yes. in this area uh -huh. and which gives high yields. Yes. That's the one you continue. That, that one, I will continue with that one. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. So anyway, we should like you've done very, very well. Yeah, and... Let the beans continue climbing. Last time we were in this particular farm, it wasn't very, very green. It looked quite different. Let's have a look. Every farm has some chicken, but Kyoko is really trying to grow his local poultry farming into a business. He has built a shed and has a good number of birds, but all is not perfect and could do with a shepherd. Here to help is an expert on the Department of Livestock. Kyoko and Peter, for how long have you been keeping these chickens? Four years ago. How has the production been? It has been a challenge. Now, I brought you an expert yes. who's going to talk to you about your chickens. Mrs. Kenya, we had a look around and we saw for ourselves. Now, what would you advise these young farmers on what they should do right? Um, first, I will start with the housing. You are supposed to put on the shavings to prevent the chicks from getting cold. On the shavings also they are supposed to dry the moisture. The floor is supposed to be completely dry. The chicks are supposed to have enough fingers. You are supposed to put ring nest. Then there are the vaccines. You are supposed to vaccinate them the first 14 days. You give Newcastle. When vaccinating for Newcastle, one way 
is to stuff the bags of water for about three hours. Mix the vaccine, which comes in doses for 100 birds, in water and let them drink. Put just enough water to be finished within two hours. The other way is to give each bird a drop through the nose or eye. How has it going been, Peter? It has been well. Mm -hmm. At least we have known and we have been vaccinating our chicks and our chickens. Yes. And lastly, when we you are here, we had a challenge where, where the, the chicken would lay their eggs everywhere and would not be able to manage them. There are some eggs in the bedroom, I remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but right now, there are cages. They are even you, when you can look at there, they are in the cages and their eggs are well accounted for mm -hmm. and they can lay chicks very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talking of chicks, yes. Kyoko. I can see they are sitting on eggs. Yes. Yeah, so has it, how has it been? They are comfortable mm -hmm. and there before they are increasing the number of chicks. Yeah, I can see you have so many. How many do you have here? There are 40 of them. Mm. And they are sitting on how many eggs, Peter? Those that are sitting on the eggs, they are four in number mm -hmm. and each is sitting between 10 eggs and 14 eggs. And you are hoping to make how many to have how many eggs per day? With the current chicks and the, the ones that are being seated, seated on, we are planning to start with around 100 eggs each day. Well done. Yes, you have done very well. Tomatoes are part of Kyoko's core business. He's concerned that they are being affected by pests and diseases, and to help him solve this problem, is an expert from our friend Sijenta. Yeah, there are some few things that is disturbing this the, this crop. We have one diamond backmouth. As you can see, the crop is uh, totally destroyed by this the, this pest. I think every one of you can see this this small pest. It's called GBM. That's what is drawing these small holes on the leaf. And we've got another problem that is havens. And the havens are these ones which you can see as if there is whitish on the crop. That's what is disturbing the crop. Now we have got match for DBM and we have got uh, Actara for havens. If you find that your crop is whitish in color and there are no uh, pests like havens, then it means there, are, there is powdery mildew. We've got two products for powdery mildew. Mm -hmm. We've got score and we've got Otifa. What about the tomatoes behind you? What did you observe? When we went around, you could see some, some pests frying the white, very white ones. Mm -hmm. eh? Those ones are called the, the white fries because when you don't take care of it, your tomato will not go anywhere because mm -hmm. now they suck the, the, the fruit that is in tomatoes and that tomato cannot be able to pick the food that is in the soil. The, the, this product is very nice, the Actara one for white fries. And in case they are still having some other sucking pests, this, this product will take care of all of them. What have been the results? The results are good mm -hmm. because you can see that the yields also has been increased. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you sold a lot? Yes. Well, so Peter, how much do you sell? It depends with the, the timings and how the market is favoured by other produce like cabbage. Yes. But most of the times we do sell between 15 shillings and 20 shillings per kg. Oh, per kg? Yeah. Oh, so you could say that is good? Yeah, that is good. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. Is this the only patch you have in the farm mm. or you have other vegetable patches? We have other vegetable. Uh -huh. Just like in Skuma, we still have some more. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this is not the only one. Yeah, this is not the only one. Uh -huh. And still, we are preparing spinach. Uh -huh. Yeah. Soon they will be on this other side. Very Thank impressive. You, well Welcome. Yeah. We helped the farmers harvest some Skuma wikis, then went on to see their very impressive tomato patch. The result were quite well because we also increased our yields mm -hmm. because we could all, we could be able to to conquer any disease that could defend ourselves mm -hmm. and also the pests that could also arise from our crops we are expecting the least we can get is around 130 crates 130 crates yeah of tomatoes oh. yeah that's the least we should get wow. so we are expecting even more we were more than willing to help the farmers in staking their tomato crop after all the good work they had done. So Agnes, tell me, what do you say about your sons? Nataka watoto waendelee bizuri, wakuwe na piti, wafanya kazi ile inatakiwa katika Kenya. Hala, 
<laughs> That's nice. Unajua kilimo ni biashara. You are happy. Si ya papi. Eh, na furahi na ninasikia. Hiyo maneno ni mazuri. Well, Naomi is always good to leave farmers smiling and it's good to see farmers adapting to new farming methods and improving and increasing their income. That is very true. That is why they should keep it here on Shaba Shaba. <laughs> Thank you.